uh, but just to reinforce it here this morning, we can go without our masks during the, the, the service while we're seated, but we must wear them when we're singing. Uh, so please yourself, feel comfortable either way you do it. Um, you can um, have them off, but remember we must have them on when we sing. Uh, it, it's going to work out well because as the procession comes in, we're going to have a hymn, so that's the time to have it on, take it off during the service, and when we're doing the dismissal, uh, we're doing our next hymn, so back on again, please. Thank you. Where do you think we might be in Lent? 
We are in Lent. We are in Lent, so we'll go to the Lent. Welcome, everybody. Would you please sit or kneel as you feel most comfortable? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled and wandered far off. Let us then ask for mercy, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Most merciful God, we humbly admit that we need your help. We confess that you have wandered from your ways. We have done wrong. We have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Why are our sins to be us to heal others? Bring about in us the fruit of your spirit, that we may live as disciples of Christ. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Day. God of all times and places, in Jesus Christ, who is lifted up upon the cross, you open for us the path to eternal life. Grant that we, being born of water and the Spirit, may joyfully serve you in newness of life and faithfully walk in your holy ways through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for readings from the Bible? Our first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come before from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, Psalm 22, verses 24 to 32, we will say it by alternate verses. O oh, praise the Lord, all that you fear him. Hold him in honour, O seed of Jacob, and let the seed of Israel stand in awe of him. For he has not despised nor abhorred the poor man in his misery, nor did he hide his face from him, but heard him when he cried. 
From you springs my praise in the great congregation. I shall pay my vows in the sight of all that fear you. The meek shall eat of sacrifice and satisfy. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May their hearts rejoice forever. Let all the ends of the earth remember and turn to the Lord, and let all the families of the nations worship before him. How can those who sleep in the earth do him homage, or those that descend to the dust bow down before him? The he has saved my life for himself, and my posterity shall serve him. This shall be told of my Lord to a future generation, and his righteousness declared to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Our second reading is a reading from the letter to the Romans, Chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the baroness of Sarah's womb, nor distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith, and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. Hear the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 8, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, but after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Now, I'm just, just wondering if anyone here has ever had an existential crisis. Do you know what an existential crisis is? I could, it's that moment... Oh, Paul. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty, Paul. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I should have put my hand up too. Pardon? Ah, okay, yeah, that's enough to give you a <laughs> crisis. Um, have you ever asked yourself, got to a point in your life where you've thought, why am I here? Where should I go? What is my purpose in life? You know, those sorts of things. And I think most of us have, once we sort of recognise what, what I mean by crisis. In fact, I think all of us will have pondered things like this in some way. Unfortunately for me, every time I think of existentialism, I go back to a, a great trilogy of books. There's six of them, um, Douglas, written by Douglas Adams, called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it's, it's a brilliant exposition of satire and British absurdist comedy. And the main premise is built around a society of hyper-intelligent pan-dimensional beings who want to know the answer to the ultimate question. They're having a huge existential crisis. Now, what is that question? It's the question, the big question, the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. And they built a, com a supercomputer that took seven million years to run. And what was the answer? 42. Problem was, they didn't work out what the question was. And then the story sort of runs from that. But I digress. We all have our moments of existential angst, existential questioning, or perhaps even an existential crisis. We don't want to live a meaningless existence. We want to know that there is meaning, that there is a point to this, this thing we call life, that we have a purpose, that we're not just here to exist, but we're here to achieve something, to really, really live. And a lot of effort is put into this idea of our purpose. Some people believe that we all have a destiny, a destiny that we can't change, a destiny that we're, we're being pushed towards. And whilst, yeah, that, that there's, there's stuff in the Bible that could account for that, for me, it doesn't really account for the freedom of choice we have the freedom to choose that God has given us. I prefer to consider our, purpose, uh, our, consider our purpose rather than our destiny. We all have a purpose in life. But what is our purpose? For Abraham, his purpose is hinted at in his name. Now, in our text for this morning, Abraham is still being called Abram at the beginning. Abram means exalted father. Now, at this time, Abram did have a son, but not with his wife. And I won't mention that she's technically half, his half-sister, but yeah, we won't get into that. So, technically, Abram is a father, but he doesn't have a legitimate heir by his wife. And we hear that Abram is 99 years old, so really, he's a bit past it. And so is Sarai, I hasten to add. And then God ups the stakes and changes Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many or father of a multitude, and tells him that, yes, you're going to be the father of, of a multitude of nations. I mean, how much pressure is that for you approaching your 100th birthday? So this is God anointing Abraham with the job of being the the original patriarch of God's people. This is Abraham's purpose. And again, Abraham is 99 years old and Sarah, Sarah as she is now known, because God's changed her name as well, she's 90. Now normally this wouldn't work. And Abraham and Sarah both know it. And in the following passage, both 
Abraham and Sarah laugh when they're told this news from God. They laugh at the absurdity of it, the ridiculousness of it. And Abraham, realising that he might be a bit past it, asks, asks God instead to, to recognise his son Ishmael, born to the slave woman Haggai, as his legitimate heir. God won't, but does promise to make a great nation out of uh, Ishmael's offspring as well. Now, what is patently clear is that Abraham and Sarah think they can't do it. They're not capable, that their, their purpose has passed them by. They're way gone past their use by day. <coughs> Yet we know that there was a son born to them, Isaac. And the story continued and still continues. The point I want to make here is this. God gave Abraham and Sarah a purpose and then God did what was needed to help them make that purpose a reality, to fulfil their mission. Abraham is the patriarch to the Jews and the Gentiles, and then Islam is a link in the, sorry, Jews and the Christians. And in Islam is a link in the chain of prophets that runs from Adam to Muhammad through Ishmael. God helped them fulfil their God-given purpose, even when it seemed impossible. God will help us find our purpose and help us fulfil that God-given purpose even if it seems like a big ask. And I don't think that we have just one purpose in life, but we do have one from which everything else comes. We do have a primary purpose. And essentially that primary purpose is to love God and to live in God's love. The first great commandment, the most important one, what is it? Love God. Yes, love God. Simple enough. What flows on from it is what gets a bit trickier. In the reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, Paul is addressing a conflict in the very early Roman church between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians about where their righteousness, their basis for their relationship with God comes from. Now, as you know, in the Jewish culture, the emphasis is, is on obeying the law. And that is how you express your love for God and stay in relationship with God. Paul is saying that it is not in the slavish adherence to the law that good relationship with God is found, but rather in faith. Faith in God is the basis of the relationship and our love for God is to have faith in God and to trust in God. And from that love of God, our actions are motivated. From this love that we have, the great commandment, comes the second great commandment. It flows on naturally to love our neighbours as ourselves, to value others as much as we value ourselves and to treat them the way we would want to be treated. And I talked about valuing ourselves last week. Is everyone doing a better job of valuing themselves this week? I hope so. I hope there'll be a test at the end. So then moving to the gospel, we have a clash between the purpose that Jesus knows he has and the purpose that people like Peter thought that Jesus should have. Because as you know, the long-awaited Messiah was supposed to be this mighty warrior king whose purpose would be to make Israel the biggest and best and toughest nation in the region if not the whole world. In the previous passage, Peter had rightly answered Jesus when Jesus had asked him, well, who do you say I am? Peter answered, the Messiah, the Son of God. And following on from this, though, Peter is very shocked to learn something quite different about the nature of Jesus' Messiahship. And Jesus then uses this as an opportunity to explain the true nature of following him, that to love God and follow Jesus is to radically change our priorities. We learn that following Jesus, loving God, involves being ready to make an account of our faith, to stand by our faith. It involves letting go of our instinct for self-preservation and accepting that the way of Jesus is the way of the cross. 
that it might not mean an easy or glorious existence. But there is always that promise that there is a bigger picture, there is something greater going on. And this is further explanation of our purpose as Christians, to love God and live for the kingdom without the expectation of reward or favour here in this life, but in the full knowledge that there is a much bigger picture in which every single person can play a part. All we need to do to be part of it is to have faith and love God, fulfilling our primary purpose. God has made it possible for all people to fulfil their purpose by changing the covenant from one based on a slavish and single-minded observance of Levitical law into a covenant based on repentance and forgiveness and grace based on the two great commandments. So whilst it may be tough for us in our lives as Christians sometimes, that we know that being a Christian doesn't mean everything gets easy, we know that anything we think we may lose in the process of being selfless is far outweighed by the fact that in giving up our lives, we gain our lives. In devoting ourselves to the kingdom of God and not putting all of our effort into our own self-preservation, we learn how to be free to really live. So accept your purpose. <laughs> I was only going to say accept your purpose, but that would just be silly. Love God. Live a life that is really worthwhile, a life that is really worth living. And even though 42 might be a good answer to the ultimate question, the fact is that you won't find a better answer to the ultimate question than God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for the church and for the world. No, 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 no. Uh, no, we're up to the creed. Do you need your reference? The creed. Sorry, please stand. You want to get out early, don't you? No, it's not in my book. <laughs> it is not in my book. Hey, get out. Excuse us, we'll just have an argument. Oh dear. Oh dear. Sorry. There's a page missing. Sorry, Sorry Rosalind. <laughs> Sorry, Auntie Rob. Look, have my book. No, I know the creed. There you go. Sorry, folks. I did win that battle. <laughs> she always does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woman. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is, seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the world and for the church.
right. From the second Sunday in Lent. God of promise and hope, we bring to you our prayers, believing that with you all things are possible. Hear the prayers we offer. In accordance with 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4, which says that first of all, petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all those in authority, we give you thanks for the overt Christianity of our constitutional monarch, Elizabeth II. We thank you for her leadership. We praise you for the public COVID-19 vaccination of Her Majesty and Prince Philip. We thank you for the video of hope, wherein Her Majesty gave reassurance to us about the vaccination. We pray for Prince Philip as he is in his second week of hospitalisation in King Edward VII Hospital. God of hope, in your mercy, hear us. You promised to make Abraham the father of many nations, and your promise came to birth. We praise you that in Jesus Christ you fulfilled the promise made to the fathers. You have not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted. You have not hidden your face, but listened to the cry for help. As Christ dwells within us, we promise to fulfil your word in helping the suffering and afflicted. God of hope, in your mercy. You promised a Messiah to bring salvation to your people. And through the obedience of Mary, your promise came to birth. We praise you for your holy Catholic Church, which through the centuries has proclaimed your gospel. We praise you for the leaders of churches, theologians and teachers, for those who have taken the gospel to distant or dangerous places, who have persisted despite apathy, ridicule, and persecution, constantly striving for unity and trust between Christians of different traditions, leading to understanding and respect between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. God of hope, in your mercy, you promise to send a comforter to your people, and in the coming of the Holy Spirit, your promise was fulfilled. Through the Spirit dwelling within us, you relieve, comfort, and heal your suffering people. Through the light of your glory, we feed the poor, heal the sick, raise the dead. Open your eyes, open our eyes to your glorious light. God of hope, in your mercy. You promised that from death would come new life. And in the resurrection of your son, your promise was fulfilled. We thank you for your faithful servants of every age. We give you thanks for all who have received and believed you, for those whom we love who have gone to your heavenly presence. We praise you for the faith of Abraham, the trust of Sarah, the obedience of Mary, and the lives of all your saints. We thank you that you have filled us with your grace, that through Christ in us, your promises are fulfilled. Open our eyes further to the wonders of your love. As Abraham hoped against hope and believing, became the father of many nations, so do we believe and gain our justification. God of hope and promise, in your mercy. God of Father Abraham, we praise you that now in Christ you have made us a light to the nations, even to the multitude of nations that from, form the people of Australia, that you call us to be peacemakers. God of our mercy, hear our prayer. That's it. Amen. Now we stand for our uh, non-viral greeting of peace. <laughs> 
We are the body of Christ. The, is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin, and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to walk in the way of his love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread. Oh, and the wine that's not there yet. And this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of him. 
mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God of mercy, may we who have shared in this holy meal know your forgiveness in our lives, bring your reconciliation to others, and be a sign of your wholeness in this broken world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, good morning again, folks. I um, just have to carry my microphone around for the, for the streaming. So we are being streamed in, in case you'd, you'd let down your guard and said something rude or anything. It'll get picked up. Uh, so our notices for this morning. Um, so uh, the Lenten studies have begun, but it's not too late to join. Just let me know. Um, I think I've got a bit out of it so far. Been, been some really interesting discussions. It's been good. Uh, so there is a notice there about the Reconnect Care in the Community team, our pastoral care team. Um, so please let me know if you'd like to be involved. Uh, we have a meeting on the 2nd of March at, uh, well, here, but BYO lunch from Vietnamese Watton Cafe to the foyer at 12 noon. 
Okay. And, uh, and there's a notice there about footprints too, that's um, the more physical material support. Uh, Ladies Guild meeting on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, Easter raffle tickets are available for $1, which will be drawn Sunday the 28th of March. Uh, make an Easter basket activity Wednesday the 24th of March. They're not doing, uh, they're not doing the Easter bonnets again. I won the last one. I made a helmet look like an Easter egg. Um, Easter flowers. Of course, there, there are no flowers during Lent, um, but we are taking a collection to enable a, a huge spread at, on Easter Day. Uh, there's a notice there that the services, of course, are still being streamed. I think those are the notices people, you, you can all read. Um, just on the, uh, do, do any of you know that boys, we're starting a boys' brigade? Uh, I've forgotten what it's called now. Um, but Boys Brigade Youth, uh, youth Movement uh, is, is coming to St Thomas's Church. We have a, uh, a parents' info evening on uh, this Tuesday, the 2nd of March at 7pm here in the church. Uh, there's some details here, so if anyone would like a copy of it, pass on to grandkids, kids, random people in the street, whatever, put on Facebook. Um, just, just let me know uh, and I'll get the information for you there, a little flyer. So don't think it's in there, no. Is there anything I missed? Oh, Louisa. Oh, yeah. Well, tech, there is conjecture about that. Apparently they got his birth certificate right. That's today. Yeah, so the actual days today, the birth certificate, the official ones yesterday, I think it's all um, a ruse to spread it out <laughs> more. But you know. So if it's on two days, you get two lots of presents. <laughs> well, I think you should. All right, so let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronald, birthday to you. There. Okay, now, if, if, if only more people would tell me when their birthdays are, and we could do this regularly, wouldn't that be, wouldn't you love that? As long as it's someone else, you say, yeah, as long as it's not me. Okay. Uh, look, I think that's all the notices then. So, let's sing our final hymn, which I don't have my hymn sheet. What's the other one? Take up your cross, take up your cross of course. <laughs> yes, take up your cross. Uh, and it's on the sheet. Please stand. <laughs>
peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen.